Nurse Champs and hello world! I'm Nurse Sal and welcome back to my channel. To those of you who are new here, thank you and welcome to the team. And to those who are going to take their exam anytime soon, I wish you all the luck. Like I always said, another day to learn about OSCE and another day closer to becoming a UK registered nurse. If you are about to take your OSCE anytime soon, then this video is for you. Yes, as the thumbnail of this video says, I'm going to teach you how to do a pressure area assessment. But before we head into it, Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to get notified just in case I post more videos, then hit the notification bell. Oh yeah, Pressure Area Assessment Station. This is a skill added in the NMC OSCE last 2021. It is a silent station, meaning you don't need to verbalize anything. All you have to do is to write. In this station, you will be given a scenario right here and a Braden scale like this oh I'm gonna put it here Braden scale what are you going to do in this station well you have to assess the scenario calculate the Braden scale score identify the most vulnerable area for pressure risk and signs of pressure ulcer development this is actually a pretty easy station but even though this is an easy skill station you can fail in this if you incorrectly calculate the Braden score or if you fail to memorize and write the vulnerable areas and then the signs of the pressure ulcer development so make sure you learn thoroughly before attempting this skill anyway in this video we're going to discuss all that we're going to discuss a pressure area assessment marking criteria so you'll know what to do in your exam as you all know marking criteria is the bible for the OSCE exam this is what the NMC checks I will show you how it's done. I will teach you what to do and later on in this video, I will show you a sample scenario in which I'm going to do a sample simulation on what to expect, what to see in the actual exam. Are you all ready? Let's go! Pressure ulcer. Pressure ulcers are injuries that break down the skin and underlying tissue. They are actually caused when the area of skin is placed under pressure. They are sometimes known as bed sores or pressure sores. We all know that there's a lot of elements that will put our patients at risk of having this pressure source or pressure ulcers. This is where the Braden scale comes in. What is a Braden scale? It is a scale that measures the risk of developing pressure ulcers. As you can see here, the scale is consists of six subscales that reflect the determinants of pressure. We've got the sensory perception, activity, and mobility. We get this factor as well, influencing tissue tolerance, which is the moisture, nutrition, and friction and shear. So we get six right there. So this is a Braden scale. I got a big one right here, but I'm gonna put it on the I'm gonna put it on the screen. I know this seems like a lot, but it's actually not. When you're assessing the scenario, you will have this at the same time. So you just gotta compare it and then you get a score. So as you can see right here, these are the six subscale. And it is rated from one to four. Yeah? One to four. One meaning least favorable, four meaning the most favorable. Uh, except for the last uh, sub subscale, which is the friction and shear that happens to have only one to three. Okay, so you have to like, once you compare it with the scenario to determine the risk of developing pressure ulcers, each subscale has to be rated in reflecting the condition of the patient best. So remember this, one is the least favorable, four is the most favorable. So what does it mean? The low total score indicates that the patient is high risk for developing pressure ulcers. A high total score, on the other hand, means low risk. The patient is low risk of developing pressure ulcers. See, that's how easy it is. 
Okay, again, so, you have to read on it because this is the basis on what uh, this is what the basis of your scores. Okay, so whatever is in the patient scenario, you're gonna compare it to this one and you're gonna score it. Okay, and you're gonna put your answer on the um, score uh, column. Yeah, and then you're gonna total it later on, which I'm gonna do later during our simulation. Okay, the first step is the sensory perception. It's the ability to respond meaningfully to the pressure related discomfort. You're gonna rate the patient one if the patient is completely limited. So, what does it mean? Meaning the patient is unresponsive does not moan, does not flinch, or even grasp. So, the patient is unresponsive to painful stimuli because of diminished level of consciousness or maybe the patient is on sedation. Or, it could be that the patient is having limited to feel the pain over most of the body. That could be one of the reasons. Okay, so you will rate the patient too under sensory perception if the patient is very limited. Unlike completely limited, very limited means the patient is able to respond to stimuli. But the patient can communicate discomfort, okay? They can only do that by moaning or being restless, okay? Restlessness, okay? Or has a sensory impairment which limits the ability to feel pain or discomfort over half of the body. Rate number three, meaning the patient is slightly limited. What does it mean? So the patient this time is responding to verbal stimuli or verbal commands. But obviously the patient cannot always communicate discomfort or the need to be turned or has some sensory impairment which limits the patient's ability to feel pain or discomfort in one or two extremities, okay? Lastly, rate number four you can give the patient if the patient have no impairment, okay? What does it mean? Uh, the patient is responding to verbal stimuli or command, has no sensory deficit, uh, which would limit the ability of the patient to, to uh, feel or voice a pain or even discomfort, okay? So that's our sensory perception. Okay, rating from 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's go now to the second scale, which is moisture. Is this the degree which the skin of the patient is exposed to moisture? Alright, so let's rate it from 1 to 4. Rate number 1, constantly moist. What does it mean? Skin is kept moist almost constantly. How, how does it happen? Uh, by perspiration, yeah? Or the patient is covered with urine or etc. That would make the patient um moist all the time or let's just say dampness is detected every time the patient is uh, repositioned moved or turned okay number two is very moist skin is often but not always moist so what you have to do linen must be changed at least once a shift okay rate number three occasionally moist so the skin of the patient is occasionally moist requiring an extra linen change approximately once a day okay so at least not too much okay rate number four if rarely moist skin is usually dry linen only requires changing at a good amount of intervals or routine intervals okay so yeah that's it. That's our second scale. Okay? Now for the third scale, we've got activity. Yes, this is the degree of the physical activity. Okay? Rate number one, bed fast. Meaning, the patient is confined to bed. Rate number two, chair fast. Yes. The patient is still walking. The patient is still having the ability to walk, but very limited or probably non-existent. The patient cannot bear down own weight or the patient needed an assistance uh, going to the chair or wheelchair. So the comparison between the two, bed fast and chair fast, at least the patient is able to get to a wheelchair or a chair. Okay, now for the th rate number three, we've got walks occasionally. From the word itself, the patient still walking from time to time. So, walks occasionally during the day, but for a very short distances only. Um, this could be done with or without assistance, but normally the patient uh, spend majority of each shift in bed or chair. Okay, now for rate number four, uh, walks frequently. The patient is able to walk outside the room at least twice a day or, or inside the room 
at least once every two hourly during waking hours okay so again that's our activity rated one two three and four now so okay. the next category will be the mobility okay okay this is the ability of the patient to change and control body position okay we're gonna rate it rate number one completely immobile okay so what does it mean the patient does not make even slight changes in the body or extremity position without assistance okay so meaning the patient is not really doing anything now for the rate number two very limited the patient is still able to make occasional uh, slight changes in the body or extremity uh, positioning but uh, unable to make frequent or significant changes independently okay so rate number three slightly limited so the patient makes uh, frequent those light changes in the body or extremity uh, but position independently okay so that's the third the number four rate would be no limitation so the patient doesn't have a problem of of mobility or positioning okay patient makes major and frequent changes in the position okay so there you have it now, now for the next category we've got with some scale or category we've got nutrition so this is basically the usual food pattern or intake of the patient we're gonna rate it from one to four rate number one very poor what does it mean the patient never eat a complete meal never rarely eats more than half of any food offered a patient only eats two servings or less of protein like meat dairy products uh, per day the patient also takes fluids poorly does not take a liquid dietary supplement or if the patient is npo or um, nothing per arm or nil by mouth and or maintained on a clear fluid diet or probably on an iv uh, um, intravenous uh, fluid for more than five days okay that's the patient Rate number two would be probably inadequate. What does it mean? Uh, the patient rarely eats complete meal and generally eats only about half of any food offered. Protein intakes only include three servings of meat or dairy products per day. Occasionally, the patient will take a dietary supplement. On the other hand, the patient is receiving less than optimum amount of liquid diet or tube feeding. Rate number three would be adequate. It's over half of most of the meals offered. It's a total of four servings of protein or dairy uh, that's per day. Uh, occasionally, the patient will refuse a meal but will usually take supplement when offered, okay? Or the patient is already on tube feeding on a TPN uh, regimen which will probably meet most of the patient nutritional needs anyway. Okay, so the patient is on TPN. Rate number four, excellent. Meaning, patient eats most of every meal. Never refuses a meal. Usually eats a total of four or even more servings of meat or dairy products. And sometimes, occasionally, the patient eats in between meals. And the patient doesn't need a supplementation. Okay, food supplements. The patient doesn't need that. There you have it. That's our... Uh, that's our nutrition category. Now for the last subscale category, we've got friction and shear. We can only rate 1, 2, and 3 for this category, okay? So the first rate would be problem. So the patient requires moderate to maximum assistance in moving, okay? The patient needs complete lifting without sliding against. Uh, sheets is actually impossible. Okay, the patient frequently slides down the bed or the chair and obviously the patient will be needing or requiring repositioning with maximum assistance. Okay, the patient uh, might have spasticity, contractures or agitations. Uh, this will all lead to almost constant friction. So there's a lot of friction if the patient is having those symptoms. Okay. Now, for the second, which is potential problem, what does it mean? So, the patient, this time, the patient will move feebly or requires a minimum assistance. During a move, the skin might probably slide to some extent. So, against the sheets, the chair, restraints, or other devices. But the patient will maintain um, relatively good position uh, in the chair or the bed uh, most of the time. But, you know, the patient will occasionally slide down. Okay, so that's the rate number two now for the rate number three the last one no apparent problems i want this no problems at all okay so what does it mean uh moves in bed and in the chair independently 
the patient can do that and obviously the patient will have a sufficient muscle strength to lift up completely uh, during a move okay so this time the patient is able to maintain good positioning in the bed or the chair so there you have it there you have it all the six sub scale we've already discussed all those things so we are gonna jump into the next page okay oh let me remind you that when you go to the exam, you're going to be having, again, the Braden scale. Next one is the scenario. And the next page with that one is um, you have to write there the vulnerable areas for pressure ulcers and also the signs of pressure ulcers. So there you have it. Um, we're going to do it on, uh, from the marking criteria. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start on the marking criteria so you know what to write on those page. Okay, here we go. So in the pressure area assessment, you have to do this station within 8 minutes. Uh, we are done discussing with the scenario and the Braden scale. Yeah. So we're going to do now the, the, the next page of that one. So remember candidates, to achieve full marks, the candidate needs to identify or to write a minimum of 8 areas. Okay, 8 areas. Okay. For partial marks, I think it's about minimum of 5. But the goal is to write a minimum of 8. Okay, let's go on that one so it's safe for us to pass, okay? The more chances of passing this OSCE exam. Okay, so what are those areas, by the way? So according to the marking criteria, so we've got the heels, sacrum, ischial tuberosities or buttocks, elbows, temporal region of the skull, shoulders, femoral trochanters or the hips, back of the head, toes, ears, and the spine. Okay, remember this formal anatomical or plain English terminology is accepted. Okay, if I were you, just stick with this, with this right here. Okay, just stick with them. It will be safer and more chances for you to pass this OSCE. Okay, better chance for you to pass this OSCE. Okay, all right, guys. Okay, for the, the next criteria is you have to identify or write the signs this time the signs that may indicate pressure ulcer development for full marks you need to identify the min uh, minimum of seven okay for partial marks you have to identify a minimum of four but why go for four let's go for seven more chances for you to pass your exam so what are these signs of pressure ulcers we've got persistent erythema so what is this this is the flashing of skin Number two, we've got non-blanching hyperemia. So this is the discoloration of the skin that does not change when pressed. So it's like when you press this one, it's still red. So that's non-blanching hyperemia. Okay. Third one, blisters. Next, discoloration. Next, localized heat, localized edema, localized indurations, meaning there's an abnormal hardening, purplish or bluish localized areas, and lastly, localized coolness if tissue death occurs okay so you have to memorize all those things by the way because those are the answers when you get to the exam okay no excuse that's the answer okay there you have it so let's come now to the favorite part of this video which is the sample scenario and the simulation on how you're gonna do it on the exam okay so let me just give you this scenario which is right here this is the time when you're gonna pause the video yeah and time yourself for eight minutes okay get back to me or play the video once you are finished are you ready always remember practice is the key to your OSCE okay so again pause the video now time yourself for eight minutes and get back to me when you're finished okay. so I can reveal to you the answers all right pause the video right here oh hello there that was quick all right have you done it time yourself as well for eight minutes good now here's my answer for this scenario let me just remind you by the way this is just my take I'm not saying that this is the scenario that you're gonna be getting in the exam I just made this one up okay I just made this one up and I'm not saying that my answers are correct but this is just my take this is just my answer just in case I go to the OSCE and have this um, pressure area assessment okay so these are just my answers and my take here you go enjoy <laughs> In order for you to get the answers to this, you need to assess the scenario that was given. Assessing the scenario and comparing it to the Braden scale, I have arrived to these answers. 
These are the answers for the areas of pressure ulcer development and the signs of pressure ulcer development. And just like that, we are now done with our pressure area assessment, okay? I hope that you have learned something for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, comment down below what you liked about this video and what you don't like about this video. And please do subscribe to my channel so I'd be more enthusiastic to post more videos. And if you want to get notified just in case I post new ones, hit the notification bell right there. Okay? This has been Nurse Cell. See you on the next one. Bye!